How's it going everyone? Adam from Sinister Custom Cycles again. This video is going to be about the gearing. I kind of talked about it in the last video or two that I was going to do a next one about gearing uh, different ratios, different power, different specs. So let's go with the original one. Uh, my personal bike, Cargi Huntington Extended Frame. Uh, both these bikes, both the, the Huntington and the Cheetah builds, they both have the HS49cc four-stroke gas engines. And so you got two gears. You got your front gear coming off the centrifugal clutch, and then you got your rear drive gear, which is mounted to a hub-mounted bracket. So both front gears on these bikes both have the 10 tooth sprockets. The back ones, however, are different. So on my bike, the Huntington, this one I'm running a 44 tooth sprocket on the back. And top speed, flat ground, no wind, with a rider about 160 pounds, I get a solid 28 sometimes 29 miles an hour out of it. Now on a level ground or slight incline I can take off from a dead stop without pedaling and while you can feel it's kind of under a little bit of stress it does take off uh, without any assistance from me. Now on this one, like I mentioned before, same 10-2 sprocket on the front However, this one, uh, the girl wanted a little bit more power off the start and also possibly enough power to pull a trailer with a dog in it. So on this one, the rear is running a 48 tooth sprocket, which is four teeth more than what I have on my bike. Four, to four teeth may not sound like much, but the difference in power is unbelievable. There is absolutely no need uh, to pedal at all with this bike. From a start, on level ground, a slight incline, or even a major incline, uh, this bike has plenty of power. Even on the flat ground on takeoff, if you're taking off from a dead stop and maybe going around a corner or something, it's powerful enough that you'd have to use a little bit of caution if there's any sand or loose debris on the pavement. Now the top speed on this one, flat ground with a rider about 160 pounds, no wind, you're cut down to about 21 to 22 miles an hour. <clears throat> now keep in mind my Huntington with a 44 tooth, I was around 28, 29 miles an hour. So there's a difference there of about 6 or 7 miles an hour on the top end that's being taken away. Which fortunately she wasn't interested in going really fast with it. She wanted the power uh, for hills. She didn't want to pedal as much and she wanted the ability if necessary to put a trailer on there and not uh, bog down the engine at all. So gearing this way on single speed beach, single speed beach cruisers are just play with your with the size of your rear sprocket. And as you can see, from what I mentioned here, just the difference four teeth can make, you can get these all the way up to, I believe, 60 teeth on the back. And I believe you can go down all the way to 36 uh, teeth, if I remember correctly. So 30, 36 teeth, uh, you definitely want to pedal to assist it off the start, but your top speed will probably be in the mid-30s somewhere. Uh, if you're running the 62 sprocket, your speed will probably be cut down to 12 or 15 miles an hour top end, but you'd have a lot of torque on this thing. Now keep in mind this is a single speed beach cruiser. Uh, you see I have the drive train, or the drive chain, rather, for the pedals on this side and then in the drive chain for the actual motor on this side. Now one of my next builds, I got a, quite a few ideas I'm going to be playing with here. 
Uh, one of the ideas that I'm going to next time that I'm going to try out is I'm actually going to get a multi-speed bike and then I'm going to put a shift kit on there. And what a shift kit does is transfer your drive chain from your left side over to the right side. So when you do that, and say you have a cluster of gears back here, <clears throat> transferring that drivetrain over to this side, you can actually power your gears back here, flip through your gears, and give yourself a lot lower end torque from the engine, and also a lot higher speed. Uh, easier for hills, easier on gas mileage. Gas mileage on these, you're looking at about 158 miles to a gallon. If you're running a shift kit, I've heard numerous reports that people are getting upwards of close to 180 miles to the gallon because you're taking so much stress off the engine going up hills or anything, being able to shift gears. Plus, you're also getting a lot wider range of performance out of it. Still running the four-stroke, too. So that's one of my next ideas for a build. <clears throat> Any ideas that you guys have, uh, please comment, message me, email me. Uh, my email is sinistercustomcycles at gmail.com or just leave a comment section I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, this bike, like I said before, is my personal bike. First bike I built, so kind of special to me, although I kind of tempted to change it or do something drastic to it. Not entirely sure, but any ideas that anyone has for this, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment, leave your suggestions, and uh, if they're unique enough and something that really catches my eye, uh, we'll try them out and see how they look. So that's the difference in gearing. Like I said, uh, not a whole lot of teeth can make a big difference in uh, pulling power or top speed. Next video, I uh, really don't have an idea what I'm going to do for my next video, so any ideas, any questions that someone might have, please leave the comments in the comment section below or email me direct. Love to hear them, love some new ideas, uh, any issues that I haven't covered yet in the videos that I do have out there, let me know. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do a video and find out and do a little research on my own. And, I'm no expert by any means, so I'd like to learn something myself, too. So let me know. Love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day.